I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Oh, welcome back, me Jolly Rogers. I didn't see you there. Oh, well, no, wait a second, it's you. Let's see how long this joke can play. I'm your gentleman, I'm your captain, and I'm here to talk with you about an insidious threat. A monster, not monstrous due to its monstrous appearance, no. Or not due to its monstrous appetites, no. Or not due to its monstrous behavior. These monsters, these aliens, these glowing people, are monstrous due to their subtlety, their guile, their hypnotic allure. Well, allure to some. I was never taken in by a glowing person, uh, despite what people said. I was never really one for silvery costumes, glittery sheens, uh, makeup, you know. But the glowing people have all of that in abundance. And if you are the kind of human who finds that sort of thing appealing, well, you are a likely victim to the glowing people. I can tell you that much. They go for people like you, people who like a bit of a glisten and a gleam. Well, not upright gentlemen like myself. But that doesn't mean it is not my role to defend the people who might be subject to the glowing people's ambition. You see, the glowing people don't invade us from the deep with machine guns, with bombs. They don't try and eat us alive. They don't try and paralyze us and snuffle over us like an aquatopilla. The paralysis bit, though, they, they do that of a sort. My first encounter with the glowing people was when I was holidaying in San Francisco. You see, I was there in the bay overlooking that wonderful offshore prison of theirs, Alcatraz. Quite the innovation. And it was there that I saw them for the first time. Their starfish-shaped ships twizzling to the surface of the sea, glowing with an unnatural radiance pinks and greens, clouds of ether just pff, pff, spraying out of the ship in many directions and wafting toward the prison island. Now, we didn't know what was going on. My family and I, we were terrified and we were there with our good friend Henry. Ah, Henry. But we held strong. We were not affected by the glowing people's machinations. The prisoners on Alcatraz, however, they were victims, at least some of them. You see, what the glowing people did was issue an intoxicating mist over Alcatraz, and it hypnotized anyone who inhaled. It made those victims march slowly toward the glowing people vessel, and those tall, thin, alien beings with their glistening skin, their shiny scales. I assume scales. I've never encountered one up close. But they have that rainbow trout-like exterior. And these prisoners, who, for better or worse, well, they were criminals, and so you could say they had it coming. But I don't say that, because they were for us humanity to punish and rehabilitate. But the glowing people took them. We could do nothing except watch prisoners and prison guards, mind you, just walk onto those big starfish vessels that then twirled and sank beneath the waves once more. Now, I'm not sure how deep the water is between the bay and Alcatraz, but it seemed unlikely to me that the glowing people were making some kind of lair down there. Still, myself and Henry decided to embark upon an adventure and find out. We requisitioned a submarine that just happened to be in port, and we decided we would sink to the depths of the bay, find out whether indeed the glowing people were planning a second invasion, and of course, importantly, attempt to liberate these poor prisoners and guards. Well, what we found astounded us. As I say, I'm no expert on the region. I do not know how deep the sea goes in the San Francisco Bay. 
but what we found, whether hollowed out from the earth, the seabed, or whether simply that deep all along, was a city, like a greenhouse, also stretched out in these star-like shapes that clearly mean a lot to these glowing people, perhaps evidencing their once-upon-a-time origins, because they surely are not earthlings. And within these glass structures you could see slaves, like these prisoners and prison guards, and no doubt others captured from elsewhere, marching, doing the glowing people's bidding. What was that bidding? We did not have time to find out. It did not take long for the glowing people to spot our rather crude submarine, and sadly they drove us back. We did not wish to be transfixed. We both had families and responsibilities, and anyway, there were other aliens to fight. We were merely reconnoitering for the benefits of the American government at the time, as they found out later. So we made quick our escape. We reported back what we found, and it was at that point that a CIA agent, who shall remain nameless, she told me something interesting that I'm going to share only with you. This was not the first attack of the glowing people. We had gathered as much by the number of humans that were down in their city, but she continued. Their tactic ranged depending on where they were attacking. They seemed to have a maximum capacity of prisoners between 50 and 150, and that was how much their hallucinogenic gas could transfix at a time. But they were not restricted. They could also lock eyes with a victim and impose an even stronger bond on an individual. Some even claim to have seen glowing people hypnotize a victim and turn that victim on their mutual enemies, if that makes sense. I'll, I'll give you an example. This CIA agent was talking about how, at one point, she was holidaying in Alabama, a popular vacation spot, I'm given to understand, and the lengthy coastline. She was there, in the small town of Denton, and overlooking the sea, as one does, she saw one of these glowing people alone marching up the sea front. Now, what was she to do? She had no backup, she didn't even have a weapon, so she hid. She lurked behind a rock, and watched. What was this glowing person up to? The glowing person found a little cadre of fishermen, noble sort, salt of the earth, and it locked eyes with one, exchanged no words, but that fisherman then went about attacking his friends with his fishing gear. I imagine it was quite a sight. When those fishermen overpowered their hypnotized friend, it seemed at that point the glowing person was probably going to have his chips, as we say. It was the end of him. After all, what can one glowing person do against around five or six burly Alabaman fishermen? Probably very little. I imagine the language they were using at this time about this glowing man was probably quite unsavoury, but they could not raise their fists to the glowing person before he hurled forth a fishing net of his own. Electrified, it buzzed, it crackled, it ensnared them and entrapped them, and then he fled back to the sea. What was this lone glowing person doing? Why was he without his vessel? Are we perhaps seeing different behaviour of the glowing people, where apparently all other reports are talking about their starfish vessels and attacking communities are generally isolated at a time? Are they growing bold, attacking somewhere so close to a metropolitan area like San Francisco? Are there break-offs within their community that send individuals off as scouts, perhaps? Because they are not the most subtle in appearance, I can tell you that, while they are slender and tall and vaguely humanoid, they glow lousily. Anyone can see them, twinkling like little stars. Quite beautiful, quite beautiful. Well, Henry and I, we were debriefed, demobbed. We went back to our families. We, of course, told them nothing, because better to live in ignorance than in fear. And we returned home. Since that time, I have never met a glowing person. But I am fearful of the time that I do, and I don't mind admitting it. Henry, who's always been a very strong man, 
very strong, he confessed to me at his most vulnerable moment, I could handle being devoured by a gargantuan squid, he said. I wouldn't mind going down in a fist fight against a robotic shark, and I agreed. But then what he said to me was most striking of all. The fate I fear the most is being dragged down into the depths to work as a slave for a glowing man. And I think that's a sentiment we can all agree with. Beware the glowing people and threats from beneath the sea.